also make sure to do that with you. Hello and welcome into this week's edition of AFMC TV. We're glad you're joining us. So how often do we really need to have checkups? Obviously once a year, do we need to have them more than once a year? What happens if we go three or four years before having a checkup? Joining me to answer these questions and more is Dr. Chad Rogers here at AFMC. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So checkups, you know, we hear about it every year. Got to get your checkups in, adults and children. Um, how you know how important are they and how big of a deal is it if you skip a few years right so yeah in general you kind of could say you know you could that get that yearly exam so just as a general rule i think that's kind of the thing to start but it's really important to make those a lot of times it's hard to like take off work coordinate with your family yeah, you know you, you're kind of using sometimes you're using vacation time to go to the doctor's office for two or three hours and it's not ever fun you know there's always they weigh you and they check your blood pressure and they stick you. So, you know, people don't, it's not necessarily something that's really high on people's priority list. But one of the foundations of medicine, and particularly when we talk about preventive medicine, is that year, year, yearly or annual checkup. Uh, so it's a time when, number one, you get to have your doctor all to yourself or your nurse practitioner, or whoever you kind of use for primary care, to talk about those things that you're concerned about. The second thing is to talk about things that you like if you have high blood pressure or diabetes. So kind of talk about the medications you're on and get some monitors, get some blood, like blood pressure, get some um, your blood sugar done and cholesterol. So really important so that you're not your disease is not getting worse. Right. Yeah. The other thing is, um, you know, kind of getting those routine labs, but also those routine immunizations to kind of keep yourself healthy. So these are all important things to keep yourself healthy. The reason we sort of recommend that people do that is because if you catch things early or you catch them before they happen, number one, it's going to be a lot less costly for you and for your healthcare provider and for the healthcare system if you get things addressed early. Number two, it could save your life. Yeah. You know, you always hear about people who go to the doctor and, <laughs> oh, and then there's that, <laughs> then there's that. Save, save your life. <laughs> <laughs> which is priceless, you know? Right. So, you know, that's just one of the big reasons to go. And you always hear those stories about people who just had something going on and they asked the doctor casually about it and it turned into something that, you know, led to further workup that kind of identified either cancer or maybe some other disease kind of early yeah. so that something could be done. Yeah. And I've heard, I've heard other doctors say, do these visits when you're healthy, right. when you're not feeling sick, because when you are feeling sick, you're, you're going to the doctor for a totally other reason. Mm -hmm. Plus that, you know, when you go for a totally other reason or you're going just because you feel bad, that visit is all focused on that. It's yeah. not focused on all the other stuff like your sleep and on what you're eating and how mm -hmm. your skin is doing. You know, they may ask you a whole list of questions. They may even ask you some things about things that are going on at home or how you're feeling. Are you happy? Are you sad? So there's a lot that goes into a really comprehensive checkup. And how does that differ or does it from, from an adult to a child right. checkup? So much is happening in childhood as far as development and growth and the importance of nutrition. And, and plus kids are just sick a lot, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, and then they make their parents sick. But they, uh, so, you know, when you're really young, the frequency of visits is much more often. So in the first year of life, you may go to the doctor six times just routinely. But as you get older, it gets to be, you know, a few, like three or four times a year and then twice a year and then once a year. And so that kind of becomes, sometimes if you're older and you do have a lot of, or even if you're young and you have a lot of medical problems so you're already you know dealing with the things you may want to go at least twice a year you know you want to talk to your doctor about not letting something go a whole year before you should go um, maybe every six months or every three months so that's something to kind of discuss uh, with your doctor but again to kind of head things off and to prevent you know progression or worsening of disease or to identify something that could be addressed early so, you know, for kids, it's really important to get them in because there are so many changes that are going on and there's so many things that could be screened for and looked at and prevented and, you know, making sure that those kids grow up to be healthy adults. Is there a busy season? for checkups or is it always busy? It's always the last minute thing, you know, for adults, it's usually that end of the year, they're trying to get their physical done before they, their deductible goes back up, or maybe they have requirements at work to get a wellness visit done. Yeah. So that kind of tends to be kind of a pretty busy time of the year for adults. For kids, it's really kind of that back to school time because there are sometimes there's shots associated with going back to school. Sure. There's also sports. So kids are wanting to get, you yeah. know, make sure that their heart is good 
good and that they're healthy in order to play sports. So kind of like a couple of weeks right before school, there will be a big rush to kind of get in and get those physicals done. But if you've already had that checkup done through the year, then you may not have to rush the, to, to get in at the end of the year or right before school because a lot of times those appointments really fill up. So you may call your doctor and it's be like, well, we can see you, but we can see you in three months or we can see you in six months. And that's not what people want. In general, I kind of tell people, think about your birthday. And so every year you have your birthday, kind of think about scheduling your visit around that time. And that may kind of help, you know, spread things throughout the year and also kind of be a little trigger to help you remember when it's time to go see your doctor. Anything we can do to prepare ahead of time for the visit. I once heard a doctor say, um, before you are getting your blood pressure taken, do not drink coffee right. because coffee has caffeine and that can raise your blood pressure. And if you are getting your blood pressure taken, you might not have high blood pressure, yeah. but you've got two or three cups of coffee flowing through your veins and that may Drive show, through. yeah, an elevated blood, pres blood pressure. So are there things we can do to kind of, um, have the best outcome possible. Right, right. So, and maybe save yourself a trip to the doctor because a lot of times if you have eaten or you had had something to drink, if your doctor wants to do some, some blood work, yeah. then that may, you know, postpone it because if, you know, your blood sugar is the lowest in the morning, your blood pressure is the lowest in the morning. Yeah. Uh, I know when I go to the doctor, my blood pressure just goes up naturally because I don't Something about like... that white coat or <laughs> no, that yeah. blue coat. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't like going to the doctor myself sometimes, but um, I think the big thing is a lot of times you get in there to the doctor and you think, oh, I meant to talk to her or him about this or that or the other day you know I was taking my medicine and I thought I wonder if this is related to my medicine so I think it's a good time to write things down because when you get in the office and you get under pressure and you are worried about the lab draw and and then you're also worried about you don't want to take up too much of the doctor's time or the nurse's time so you're trying to you know be efficient as possible write those concerns down yeah, that's good. and a lot of times from my perspective like I let people go first and just talk about what they're concerned about about because 99% of the time they're going to cover at least half if not more of the things that I wanted to talk about. So kind of make that list of things. Um, I think, you know, just wearing loose clothing that makes it easier to, to get examined. Um, you, sometimes they'll have you undressed into a gown. So you might want to make sure, like your mom said, to have on clean drawers, right? <laughs> so just sort of anticipating those sort of things. You may want to arrive a little bit early to allow for paperwork to be done so yeah. that you can get back on time so you can get out on time. Um, bring your pharmacy and your and your health insurance information with you. Uh, I think those are all kind of things that kind of help the visit go smoother. And sometimes if you're have if you're really sick or you're having trouble with your memory or you're having trouble with transportation, you know, bring a family member or a close friend with you to kind of help you, number one, give you support, but also to kind of help you get to the office, help you remember what you talked about. They may be also the one that says, hey, mom, weren't you worried about blah, blah, blah? Don't you want to ask them about this? And that's often a good a good cue uh, to help them remember about what, what they wanted to talk about. That's great advice. All right, Dr. Chad, yeah. thank you so much. No problem. Heather Mercer with Immunize Arkansas joins us now. And in August is Immunization Month. Yes. The governor has proclaimed it. Congratulations. Thank you. When we think of back to school naturally, we do think of immunizations. We maybe think of the younger elementary school kids, but there are some immunizations all the way up to college age right. that we need to, to be talking about as well. Right, so college students need to have be up to date on their MMR mm -hmm. vaccine, the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. And they also need to be sure um, to have their meningitis vaccines. It's not required okay. for Arkansas schools, but it is for some out-of-state schools. Oh, okay. Um, meningitis is really contagious. It's rare, but it's highly contagious and it can be deadly. So, um, you know, when you're living in a dorm, then um, they definitely want to be up to date on their meningitis um, ACWY and meningitis B vaccines. Okay. okay. Um, you know, obviously the last two years, uh, we've had a heavy push for the COVID-19 um, vaccine, but there are plenty of other immunizations that are just as important as right. that one. Well, and especially for adults, adults think, you know, like you said, it's just for children. Immunizations are only for kids. Yeah. But like um, when you're when you get over 50, you need your shingles vaccine. If you've had chicken pox, um, that was like one of the first things I did after I turned 50 was get my shingles vaccine. Pneumonia vaccines are very important for adults. Um, and then obviously the flu vaccine every season when we enter flu season 
is important for children and adults. I'm curious, is the chickenpox vaccine still a thing? Yes, okay. it's required for children to enter school. Oh, it is, okay, okay. Um, well, I just learned something new there. <laughs> um, and I know you touched on the shingles vaccine for those over 50. Is that really kind of the benchmark or are there um, vaccines for those over 40 or those over 60 that we need to be thinking? There's really not anything unless you have a chronic illness okay. for people over 40 um, other than the flu. But, you know, there sure. are di people with diabetes that they have vaccines that are recommended for people with chronic illnesses, but there's not really any vaccine that, like when you hit 40, there's nothing that's okay. recommended unless you have a chronic illness. Okay, so for the general healthy population, really you're looking at 50 and over. And is it just shingles and pneumonia and, and flu? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, healthcare treatments, um, it, it's ever changing. Is there anything new? on the horizon when yeah, it comes there's, to Yeah, um, there's some vaccines that are coming up. We've got several companies that are making the RSV vaccine. Okay. And they're for children and adults. Okay. Um, so RSV is pretty deadly in elderly people. Yeah. You know, we think about kids yeah. and babies getting RSV, That's but it can I be know. dangerous for the elderly population also. Um, there were two new vaccines that were just approved um, at the last Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices meeting, which is the advisory committee for the CDC okay. for immunizations. There was a measles vaccine that was just recently approved and a new uh, pneumonia vaccine for kids. Okay. Both of those are for kids. Um, and then there's an HIV vaccine that is in the pipeline that a couple of different companies are making. And we're still waiting on approval for the Novavax COVID vaccine. Okay. Um, it's, it's towards the late summer. Uh, is it too early to get a flu shot? Or it, are those better served once we really get into the fall season? And by better served, I mean just protects you a little longer. Yeah, I mean, we just have kind of ended the flu season for the last, for like last fall. Yeah. We were still seeing flu over the spring and into the summer. So it's really better to wait until the fall to get your flu shot. And I don't know that anyone has this year's flu shot yet. Okay. Um, and the ACIP just also recommended for the people over 65 to get the, um, I can't remember what they, it's like a, a souped up version of the flu for the older population. Okay. So they did make that recommendation. Does that, does that flu shot still come as a nasal spray as well? Yeah, okay. flu mist. Um, okay. And it only is indicated for people up to age 50. Okay. So once you hit 50, you can't get that. It's got to go in the arm then. <laughs> okay. Well, Heather, is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, just don't wait until school starts to get your kids vaccinated for their school required vaccines um, because yeah. providers have a hard time getting them in. I know this, you know, it's already August, but it is better to get them before school starts. So for sure, that's my last advice for people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good deal. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here next week for more AFMC TV.